All right, Trevor, welcome to my tea party. <laughs> I'm setting this up. I know. I just, print. just wanted to get you out of training camp, bring you up to the owner suite, you yeah. know, and get show you around your. Bit. Yeah, exactly. Get pampered. <laughs> it's so interesting because the last time I feel like I interviewed you after a win was just the national championship when you were a freshman. And you sit here before me, and I'm like, everything has changed. Yep. Like, how do you feel like you've grown over the last year? Man, uh, I feel like I've grown a lot. I feel like I've had to grow up fast, which is, you know, kind of been the story of the last, you know, five, six years for me. So used to that. Um, but I just feel like having that experience from last year, I've matured a lot, um, found different ways to lead. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I had to lead in some adversity, not really used to that, you know, from my past. And so learned a lot, you know, got a lot closer with my teammates. You learn a lot about one another and just been put in so many different situations. I feel like I've grown up a lot. Sometimes I feel like I'm 22, like I am, um, <laughs> and sometimes I feel older and just, you know, every day learning more and more. Okay, you mentioned the adversity that you're not used to. Um, the reference is the fact that in high school and through college, I mean, how many games did you lose? Uh, I don't <laughs> Three or four, somewhere in Literally there. Literally four. I, okay, I did the, four? I did the math, right, so. you lost four, yeah. but in the first three, four weeks of the season of your rookie year, you yeah. lost just as many games as you had lost in three seasons at Clemson. So you mentioned adversity. What's it like to manage something like that when you're literally not used to it, haven't been through it since you were 15? Yeah, I think just, obviously the NFL is a different game. You're not gonna, you're not gonna go undefeated. I don't know if there's been an undefeated season in however many years. So even if you're a great team, you're gonna face some challenges. It's a long season. It's really about who's playing the best at the, at the end of the season when you know you gotta earn your right to be in the playoffs and then whoever is playing their best ball in January, February, that's, that's who ends up winning it. But for us just obviously had a lot of struggles last year and being a quarterback, a young guy, still you're kind of looked at as the leader of the team. Um, and no matter if you're a rookie or you're a tenure vet, whatever you are, you got to assume that role and you got to do it the best you can. And just trying to keep everybody together, I really think we had a good locker room. Obviously, the lo locker room's changed a lot. We still have a lot of the main pieces that were here last year, but um, I thought we really were bought in and, and stuck together the whole year. Obviously, the win total doesn't really show that, but um, those guys helped me a lot, made it a lot easier on me. And I feel like the morale stayed as high as it could mm -hmm. based on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, we sit back and watch you post-game press conferences. You step up. I mean, you still have a smile. You're still energetic. We're still seeing you at practice and on the field and trying to get guys involved in the game. But what is the low? Like, help us understand what it felt like. Was there a moment or a play or a game where you were just like, this is tough because it's not easy? Yeah, there's a, I mean, there's a couple points. You know, it's a long, like I said, it's a long season in general. And then when you're not having much success, when you lose, you lose the first five, and then you go to London and get our first win, yeah. last second field goal, it's <laughs> awesome. You know, celebrating the plane ride back. We have a bye week, feel like we're turning the corner, then go to Seattle, lay an egg, play terrible offensively, um, couldn't get anything going. They, they really just had their way with us. Mm -hmm. Not a great game. And then come back, I believe, and you beat Buffalo yeah. nine to six, one of the best offenses in the league, hold them to six points, we win the game. Um, so it's just up and down. And then from there, just really couldn't find our groove, struggled offensively. That was, I guess, a struggle, just mm -hmm. week in and week out, trying to find answers and mm -hmm. having to look so many different places and feeling like you couldn't find any answers. But I really think, obviously, going through that and learning mm -hmm. and going through that with some of the guys that are still here, especially receivers, guys up front, and having that experience and now seeing where we're at a year mm -hmm. later, I feel like gives us a lot of perspective. Like, mm -hmm. we know how good we can be, for one, and how far we've came from last year, and just having that to draw from and be like, Man, remember a year ago where we were on the practice field and halfway through the season, like struggling to figure it out and how many, how far we've come since then. So it's cool to look back on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was always a loser in college, so I was, I was living that adversity. Yeah, <laughs> I was always gotta, like, where are the answers? Early, yeah, you got, you got used to, yeah. to it early. You got to it later in life. Yeah. That's okay. Um, I heard you say something in a presser where you said you want to prove that you are the player that, one, you believe you are, but that this organization also believes that you are. I just want to dig into that a little bit more. What is it that you want to show and or prove in year two? Yeah, I mean, I just, um, I know the type of player I am and that I can be on this level. And obviously, I don't think I, every week in and week out last year, proved that. So I got a little bit of a chip on my shoulder just trying to um, play to my ability every week. And then, you know, this organization, this fan base, uh, everybody here in Jacksonville, I think has invested a lot in this team and in myself and really just taking that responsibility. And, you know, we have a lot, we have a lot to prove. This team, 
Um, we got a lot of new guys that we brought in to come help us to win. We got a lot of guys that were already here that are going to help us and just really using all that fuel and let's let's do it. Let's turn this thing around and let's be the team that we know we can be. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to play a game with you. <laughs> I'm going to give you a record and some stats. You tell me which quarterback's rookie season this was. 3 and 13 through 28 interceptions, which led the league that season. Peyton, Peyton Manning. <laughs> of course you know. Yeah, we've, we've, uh, I've heard those numbers a lot, for one, and then me and, me and Peyton have talked about it last year a little bit. Um, was able to just kind of be a voice that I could, you know, person I could lean on that was in my shoes mm -hmm. at one point and helped me a lot. And, you know, he gave me some perspective on that whole year. And um, so I know, know exactly who that was. <laughs> you got a lot of new toys to play with, let's say that. So there's new faces and old faces, but it seems as though on offense, you know, you're being surrounded with some great new weapons. You get yeah. Travis Etienne back, your buddy, your guy. Uh, what has it been like to be out on the field and in training camp and seeing some of the new faces that you have on offense? It's been great. Obviously, you know, I have some rapport with the guys that were here, but even the new guys, I think, when they came in the spring, it's been really seamless how they've gelled with the group. Um, a lot of unselfish guys. I think that's what you need if you're going to have a, a great team. You've got to have guys that are willing to do whatever it takes to win. And I think we have across the board guys like that. And then it's interesting, you look at our roster, it's guys from all these different places that might not have been the number one receiver, number two receiver, whatever it was, but played well and now have a chance. We, we brought them in, one, pay them well, all these things, and give them opportunity to come out and, and show what they can do. And I think everyone's done a great job of stepping up and making plays and I just I feel like I have a lot of confidence in those guys when I when I'm in the pocket I'm going through my progressions there's no hesitation I can let it rip and just trust them and um, I think it's been cool to see all these guys come in from different places and step up and really everybody come together and, and trying to build something great. Mm -hmm. I heard a lot about this uh, Bahamas trip mm -hmm. um, these yeah. offensive <laughs> shenanigans you guys had uh, how did the trip all come together? Yeah it was just Last year, I was able to take a few guys. We went back to Clemson. It was as a rookie, kind of last minute. Mm -hmm. Just grabbed a few, few of the receivers, took them to Clemson, had a couple of days. So I wanted to do something like that, but with a bigger group, have a lot of the skill guys out. I think we had pretty much everyone except for the rookies and some of the running backs. So mm -hmm. um, wanted to get everybody together for three days, obviously to train. You know, all the guys had been doing their own thing for the off season. This was a week and a half before camp. So mm -hmm. get everybody together, train in the mornings, but then just be able to hang out, have some fun. Um, we were in the Bahamas, you know, at the beach, the pools, and just relax and mm -hmm. kind of fellowship and bond a little bit. Um, you don't get a, much time to do that. Obviously, camp, you get some time, but yeah. you're working most of the time. So really just get everybody together. I thought it was great for us all to bond. I feel like we're all a little bit closer, and it makes a difference when you're out there in camp, but then when the season comes, being able to talk to that guy because you know him. You don't mm -hmm. just – it's not just your teammate. You know, this is a guy you got a relationship with, and I think that makes a big difference. Were you guys, like, playing board games? Were you golfing? Like, what was the fun part of it? Well, we had – so, yeah, we, we would hit the pool. We had a little pool cabana. <laughs> Um, we go out to eat. Obviously, that's we had 14, 15 of it. So that's a, that's that's wow. just fun getting mm -hmm. together, doing that. There was a casino. Mm -hmm. Definitely, we're there <laughs> there a little bit. Um, I'm trying to think what else we did. Did uh, golf? We did. We did golf. That's right. I forgot about that. Okay, who was Seven the best golfer? Golf. Uh, uh, I'm gonna catch some flag. I don't. I think honestly, I think Christian's the best golfer right now. Mm. CJ is a good player. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely not me. Uh, <laughs> but we did a little scramble, so it was fun. Okay. This point a season ago, what do you feel like you've advanced at the most? Like, what do you feel like you have improved on in this off season with the time yeah. to yourself when you did your own training? What was the focus for Trevor Lawrence? I think, well, one, I think my, my body feels the best it's felt in the last couple years. Um, I think I'm throwing the ball better than I have. And then just the confidence. Okay. I think I'm really confident taking care of the ball better. But with that, also, you know, taking chances, still being the same player, but not putting the ball in harm's way. I think that was one of the biggest things I wanted to improve on. Um, and then also just my confidence and my knowledge in the playbook. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm really sharp on that. Obviously, as a rookie, you have so much different information coming at you, and you're trying to learn it all. Um, and it's tough, but I feel really feel like now when I step in the huddle, I know exactly what everybody's doing. We can communicate. We can change something if we need to. And it, when the, the quarterback has to know all that, and it makes everything go. So just knowing all that, I feel a lot more confident stepping in the huddle and then just the leadership aspect, all those things. Yeah. And speaking of new information, you have a brand new head coach <laughs> for your yeah, second yeah. season. Where were you when you found out that Doug Peterson was, was going to be the head coach? And what were your thoughts immediately afterwards? Yeah, I was, you know, I was here in Jacksonville, and um, I'd been, you know, 
Trent and um, Mr. Khan, all those guys had you know kept me updated right before the news broke, let me know this is kind of where we're heading and all that stuff. So I appreciated that and had a little bit of a heads up and really just excited, obviously, to have someone that's that's you know coached for a while, has won a Super Bowl as a player and a coach, mm -hmm. has that experience, played quarterback in the NFL, all those things, great offensive mind, it just all lined up, really made me excited. And then getting a chance to talk to him after he was hired, mm -hmm. um, really just instilled more confidence in what was to come, his plan, uh, and just the whole staff. I think that's one thing a bunch of the guys have talked about, just yeah. the confidence the staff has. There's no panic. You know, when we're installing things, just the confidence they have in us and the confidence in their plan, you know, for the offseason and for camp, the way we've progressed has really been exactly like we talked about. So mm -hmm. seeing that and just the whole staff gel together and be on the same page is really encouraging. And I think we we got something special here for sure. The conversations that you've had with Doug Peterson, what is he requiring of you? What does he want from you as his quarterback? Yeah, I mean, I think just it's not necessarily – um, conversations. This is what this is what I want. This is what I require. It's really just a, a dialogue and a conversation all the time with mm -hmm. him. And I think that's really cool when you have a head coach that can sit in your meeting room and chime in on this read or this thought process or kind of what we're looking for um, because he's seen every different look as a player, as a coach. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's going to be calling the plays and being able to build that relationship. So on game day, he knows what I'm thinking. I know what he's thinking. Mm -hmm. He calls a play gives me a, a couple little, hey, this is what I'm looking for here, you know, whatever that is. Being able to build that now, I think that's that's what it's about and being on the same page and right. when you have that, that's obviously super important. What's been your advice to Trayvon Walker? He's a number one pick, he's coming to Jacksonville. There's someone sitting in the room that's kind of been through that before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it's kind of um, really similar to last year, obviously. Um, the team's a lot different and just, I really just enjoy being around him, seeing his work ethic, guy that doesn't doesn't talk much, but he's about his business and knows how to prepare and practice and all those things. And it's been cool to see just his mindset this whole the spring and now into camp. And really him and, and Devin had a couple of conversations with them and just telling them, hey, it's, it's a long year. It's not, you don't get frustrated. It's not about where you're at right now. It's about how you progress and getting better every day. And you're gonna see, a hundred different looks and just learn from them and you're going to make mistakes and just trying to talk to those guys and realize I know you want to be great right now and you will be mm -hmm. but just keep building every day and I mean those two guys are going to one help us a lot but they're going to be great players. Mm -hmm. Well you're a great player. I, it's been a pleasure to cover it. you. Yeah, I'm excited you. to see your second year and you keep growing up. I know. Gosh, I'm trying. Stop. I'm trying. <laughs> you might get facial hair one day. That's what I know. makes me I, nervous. I just, that'd be inconvenient for me to have to shave, so I'm okay with waiting. Right? So. Well, good luck this season, Trevor. Thanks Thank for the you. time. I appreciate you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.